Welcome back. It is still the run-up. Uh, and we've been having a lot of beautiful conversations. First, we talked about the three major presidential candidates. And then we talked about grassroots politics. And now we're moving on to talk about the floods currently ravaging the country, the probable after effects and the looming food scarcity that might come with it. The devastating floods which plunged great swaths of agricultural land underwater would exacerbate food insecurity, as already the economy has seen more than a 50% rise in the prices of rice, maize, and wheat uh, since the beginning of last year. Uh, this is attributed to a lot of factors, which includes but is not limited to fertilizer shortage and surging uh, diesel prices. And uh, the president of the Federation of Agricultural Commodities Association of Nigeria has said that the outcome of the flooding situation has sparked soaring grains and that uh, a new flood crisis looms as the country faces a likely rise in the prices of many staples. And also his vice has also said that the impact of the flooding was going to be a major strain on food security as according to him, the recent floods will lead to a spike in the prices of grains. And I have just been joined by Mary Ufon, the president of Small Scale Women Farmers Organization of Nigeria. Uh, we're going to be having this conversation together. Good morning and welcome, ma'am. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? We're also trying by the grace of God. Uh, you are into uh, farming and agriculture, this is what you do. Uh, can you tell us how the floods has affected your business? Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, as the national president of a small scale women farmers in Nigeria, a platform cut across all the 36 states, including FCT, um, I, I have very huge report of a lot of losses incurred by my women farmers across the affected states. And sincerely speaking, the report we are seeing and the report we are hearing is very, very devastating. Our major aim is to make sure that Nigeria is food secured. Uh, if there is no food, if there is no woman, there will be no food on the table. No food on the table, no nation. We know that. And, but as it is now, a lot of farms have been washed away, especially those of the smallholder farmers who are the major people feeding the nation. And you know, we are beginning to see the impact that even some families are now living in camps. They have left their homes because their homes have been taken over by water. And some have even lost their investment completely. So the trauma leaving your home to go and stay in a camp alone is something else. And in that camp, they are just being fed by food being donated by other people to feed them in the camp and their families. And we can begin to see the effect of this coming up in the market when you go to buy food stuff or soup ingredients. And the prices has, you know, gone up very high. And we expect that by this season, which is the harvesting season, this should be the time we have, you know, cheap, 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 and cheap uh, prices of food in the market. But the reverse is the case now. And we're beginning to look at, even we as farmers, we, we don't even think we can even feed ourselves throughout the season, chocolate, or, you know, carrying the food to the market to feed other people. And that is why we, we've actually been advocating and calling on government on the need to, you know, give support to the affected areas so that we can go into a dry season farming to supplement what we have lost in the rainy season. A major concern has been the federal government have actually and meaningful individuals plan to make sure that they support the smallholder farmers. But how are the support being channeled? Are the real affected communities being actually targeted or this support is falling into wrong hands? 
That is our major concern now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you just mentioned, uh, you know, the, uh, urging the government to come to the aid of, you know, the women that you work with. But I wanted to ask you this question. How do you think uh, this flood, you know, would affect food production, especially in the coming year? And do you have an, an alternative? I mean, most of the farmlands are submerged underwater. Do you have an alternative to help tackle uh, the effect or cushion the effect of that this is going to have on food production? Um, actually, the alternative of this flood lie in the hands of government because as smallholder farmers, we don't have the facilities and the resources to control this water. Government should begin to open homes to collect these waters that have submerged these lands. I'm quite sure if waterways are actually open, the flooded areas will dry up and we can immediately go into production because this flood that has flooded this area have come with a lot of nutrients to settle on the land mm. and this will help us to you know, produce more food in the dry season. And unless the waters are channeled through a reservoirs or through the creation of new dams, the waters will continue to remain there for some months before it dries off for people to go into dry season. So I think the federal government have the solution because we can't plant on top of water mm. and we don't have the resources to channel these waters to where they should be channeled to. So I think the whole bulk of the intervention should come from government. Uh, apart from the government channeling these waters, uh, if you were to make a suggestion, what would you say you know, can be done to reduce the, uh, you know, the expected harsh, harsh conditions or effects that would come with this flood? Um, actually, we have also been talking among ourselves as farmers on the need for us to, you know, maintain sustainable agriculture by when you are farming, make sure that you, you reduce the number of water coming into your, your farm by doing, you know, the way you construct your ridges and also the way, way you will plan. You can plan on the waterways. When you know that that place is a waterway, you stop planning from that waterway. But most of the time, the communities don't have alternatives because that is the only land they have, so they have to use it. And secondly, we should begin to plant crops that can mature LP so that by the time the flood comes, we've been able to harvest our crops. As you can see what happened now, even the harvested crops were submerged by water. Mm. So it is another serious issue. And also, we want to also, you know, advocate that as farmers, we should also be able to make sure that we use those inputs that can help us to harvest within the shortest possible time than farming longer varieties of crops that take months to harvest. Maybe if we can start harvesting between August and September, by that time, some of the crops would have been sold in the market by force because selling it at that time, you wouldn't even recover your investment. Mm. So I think there is much or little we can do as smallholder farmers. The only thing is that we need to add, we adopt the, the new method of farming so that it can help us to reduce the losses we are incurring. And when you say the new method of farming, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, the new method of farming is by employing technology, um, like having uh, greenhouses, which I know is beyond the reach of smallholder farmers, because it takes a lot of money to construct a greenhouse. And also, you can also, you know, embark on the dry season farming, which is more safer. By the time the waters are going away, you begin to plant your crop and you harvest without any uh, problem. We need to, you know, cultivate the habit of all year farming, mm. not only to depend on the rainy season, because the rainy season is becoming so risky now. We can't control the waters and look at the pests and pesticides that comes with it. 
and it, it, it makes farmers to lose their investment. A lot of investment was lost this year, mm. especially for the women farmers. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming on the run-up this morning. It was really amazing talking to you. We appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for giving us your time this morning, ma'am. We, we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, you've heard it. Uh, whatever it is that you can do, please do. And stay safe out there. The floods could be coming with a lot of other things other than uh, just submerging f uh, food food products and, you know, there could be dangerous animals in the water. Generally, just stay safe. And this is where we draw the curtain on today's edition of The Run-Up. The Run-Up will come back tomorrow with more interesting topics. Uh, thank you so much for watching and stay glued to Plus TV. You can, uh, of course, follow us via all our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, or you can also uh, subscribe to our YouTube channels at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You can also view us on Limex at www www.limex.tv or you can view us from all Glow TV apps everywhere in the world. My name is Uchechuku Onodu. Thank you so much for watching.